we've made it to the actual Book of Mormon that covers 64 years and is what Mormon wrote just before he finished his record to tie things together and tell us about himself. After 300 pages in the Book of Mormon, the Prophet Mormon now tells us about his own time and people. He was able to live a righteous life even when it seemed that everyone around him was wicked. Mormon was responsible for bridging all of the plates into the Book of Mormon record. He was an incredible man, and we read of his accomplishments while still a youth. The Lord blesses those who serve him at any age, and Amron perceived that Mormon at age 10 was a sober child and quick to observe, and made him custodian of the Nephite records. When 15 years old, Mormon said that he tasted and knew of the goodness of Jesus when he was personally visited from the Savior. At age 16, Mormon said he was young and large in stature. He was appointed leader of the Nephite armies and began a remarkable military career that lasted for 58 years. Why, with so little age and experience, was he chosen for this duty? Remember that in 3rd Nephi, we learned that it was the custom among the Nephites to appoint for their chief captains someone that had the spirit of revelation and also prophecy. While most of us had to be coaxed to do our duty, Mormon had to be held back. At age 74, he was still leading his men from the front and not the rear. He was a great statesman and led his people under the direction of God's revelation when they were willing to be led. He prepared a record that has and will continue to change the lives of countless people, and if followed, will save the world. Mormon recorded during his lifetime, with very few exceptions, that wickedness prevailed upon the face of the whole land. He described the futility of the battles and the destruction of the wars, and wrote about the repeated depravity of the Nephites, for notwithstanding the great destruction which hung over my people, they did not repent of their evil doings. Mormon was forbidden to preach to the Nephites when they hardened their hearts and willfully rebelled against God. The land was cursed for their sake, and the three Nephite beloved disciples who desired to remain on the earth until the Savior's second coming were taken away. They were no more miracles and healings, and the Holy Ghost had no influence on the people because they were so wicked. Mormon rejoiced when he saw the people mourning, but when he saw that their sorrow was because the Lord would not allow them to take happiness in sin, he knew it was in vain. He knew the difference between sorrowing unto repentance and the sorrowing of the damned, and he was sorry that they would not come unto Jesus with broken hearts and contrite spirits. His people cursed God and wished to die, but continued to fight with the sword for their lives. Mormon said that when his people defeated the Lamanites in battle and boasted of their own strength, they did not realize that it was the Lord that had spared them. After more than 30 years of leading the Nephite armies, he refused to lead them because of their wickedness and their desire to seek revenge. Mormon had the hope and peace that he would be lifted up at the last day, and he remained righteous and faithful. He showed us how we can live in times of increasing iniquity and awful wickedness. The Nephites had not learned to love their enemies and not seek revenge or retaliate in anger. They swore by the heavens and also by the throne of God that they would go up to battle against their enemies and would cut them off from the face of the land. And it came to pass that in the 367th year, the Nephites being angry because the Lamanites had sacrificed their women and their children, that they did go against the Lamanites with exceedingly great anger, insomuch that they did beat again the Lamanites and drive them out of their lands. This course of action only escalates misery in the world and supports Satan's plan for all mankind and led to their destruction. Mormon told of the Nephites' losses against the Lamanites and explained, It is by the wicked that the wicked are punished. Mormon must have known from the records and the people's actions that the time of their destruction was at hand. It came to pass that my sorrow did return unto me again, and I saw that the day of grace was passed with them, both temporally and spiritually. For I saw thousands of them hewn down in open rebellion against their God, and heaped up as dung upon the face of the land. He loved both the Nephites and Lamanites, and poured out his soul in prayer for them. But it was without faith, because of the hardness of their hearts. When he agreed to lead them again, he said he was without hope, for I knew the judgments of the Lord which should come upon them. For they repented not of their iniquities, but did struggle for their lives without calling upon that being who created them. He knew who could bring the Nephites' victory in battle, which differed from their belief about how they could win. Mormon knew the Nephite struggles for victory were all in vain because of the strength of their enemies. He wrote that he didn't dare recommend his people to God, for fear God would smite him, but he never quit trying.
The time came when Mormon knew the Nephites' iniquity had removed all hope of the Lord's help, and wrote, I did utterly refuse from this time forth to be a commander and a leader of this people because of their wickedness and abomination. He refused to go against his enemies as the Lord had commanded, and stood as a witness to the world of everything he saw and heard according to the Spirit. He compared the Nephites to a vessel without sail or anchor, and unlike them, Mormon did use the gospel as both a sail that moves us forward along the path leading to eternal life and an anchor that holds us safely to that path. Even though Mormon lived in a very wicked world, he received help and instruction from righteous beings, including Amron, the three Nephite disciples who visited and ministered to him, and Jesus Christ. Mormon took the plates from the hill Shem and hid them in the hill Cumorah. He explained why he kept the records. 1. That you may know that ye must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged of your works. 2. That ye may believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. 3. To provide a witness that Jesus is the very Christ and the very God. And 4. To persuade all ye ends of the earth to repent. In Mormon, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, he stopped his historical narrative and spoke to us, saying that his record is intended for the house of Israel, including the remnant of Lehi's descendants, and for the Gentiles, who were to have care for the house of Israel. The time finally came in Mormon, chapter 6, when their society could no longer be reclaimed through repentance, and they gave up their right to occupy this promised land by their disobedience. Mormon was 74 years old in their last battle, and when it was over, 24 survivors gathered at the top of Cumorah, and they were the final solemn witnesses to the judgments of God. The land for miles in every direction was littered with the bodies of thousands of dead men, women, and children, all sacrificed on the altars of Nephite iniquity. Mormon's anguish at this sight reaches out across the ages to us, wrenching our hearts and souls with a reflection of his own sorrow. Oh, that ye had repented before this great destruction had come upon you. But behold, ye are gone, and the eternal Father of heaven knoweth your state, and he doeth with you according to his justice and mercy. After the battle of Cumorah, the Lamanites hunted down the remaining 24 Nephites and killed all but Moroni. Because of this great calamity, the Nephite nation was thus completely destroyed. And these are chapters 1 through 6 of Mormon, in the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. I love reading your comments each week, and you can help support the creation of these by taking advantage of the activity puzzles and coloring pages on the PonderFun Etsy site shown in the description below. Look for weekly announcements of upcoming videos and giveaways on our PonderFun Facebook page that you can like and share. If you like these videos, please share them with anyone you think might enjoy them, and I'll keep making new ones. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder.